हेलो स्टूडेंट्स अ वाम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू एट अराइजर टैलेंट हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू आर डूइंग एब्सोल्युटली गुड सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस दैट आर स्टेज टू क्वेश्चंस ऑफ योर एनटीएससी Previously, we have discussed discussed the NTSC stage one questions from the chapter that is chemical reaction and equation, and now we are starting our new questions that is the NTSC stage two questions. So let's begin the question uh, with the first question here. Which of the following set of reaction will not occur? So let us check the reactions here. MgSO four plus Fe give you FeSO four plus Mg. CuSO4 plus Fe will give you FeSO4 plus Cu. MgSO4 plus Cu give you CuSO4 plus Mg. CuSO4 plus Zn give you ZnSO4 plus Cu. Now you can see that you can find the reaction will occur or not. This concept basically depends upon your reactivity series. This question particularly depends upon your reactivity series. इस इट मीन्स अगर कोई मेटल रिएक्टिविटी सीरीज में किसी मेटल के ऊपर अकर करता है तो रिएक्शन फिजिबल होगी और अगर वो मेटल नीचे आता है रिएक्टिविटी सीरीज में बॉटम पार्ट में लाया करता है इट मीन्स उसमें ये टेंडेंसी नहीं है कि वो किसी एक्वस सॉल्यूशन में से दूसरे वाले मेटल को रिप्लेस कर सके तो अगर हम देखें फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन में मैग्नीशियम और आयरन की बात करें तो मैग्नीशियम और आयरन की रिएक्शन फिजिबल नहीं है क्योंकि वो उसको डिसप्लेस नहीं कर सकता सो दिस इज अवर रॉन्ग इक्वेशन अगेन अगर हम एफ ई और कॉपर की बात करें तो अगेन कॉपर भी रिस्प्लेस नहीं कर सकता अगर हम मैग्नीशियम सल्फेट और कॉपर की बात करें तो फिर से मैग्नीशियम और कॉपर की रिएक्शन पॉसिबल नहीं है क्योंकि वो उसको सॉल्यूशन में से रिस्प्लेस नहीं करेगा लेकिन अगर हम कॉपर सल्फेट और जिंक की बात करें तो जिंक की ये टेंडेंसी है कि वो कॉपर को रिप्लेस करके जिंक सल्फेट फॉर्म करेगा और कॉपर सल्फेट उसमें से कॉपर आयन उसमें से हमें आ, सॉलिड फॉर्म में हमें मिल जाएंगे तो इनमें से कौन सी रिएक्शन पॉसिबल नहीं है इट मीन्स हमारी फर्स्ट सेकेंड और थर्ड रिएक्शन पॉसिबल नहीं है तो ओनली रिएक्शन दैट इज पॉसिबल हेयर इज इक्वेशन नंबर फोर कॉपर एंड जिंक आर रिएक्टिंग टूगेदर बिकॉज जिंक इज लाइंग अब द कॉपर इन द रिएक्टिविटी सीरीज सो विच ऑप्शन इज करेक्ट हेयर लेट्स चेक द ऑप्शन हेयर फर्स्ट एंड थर्ड सेकेंड एंड फोर्थ फर्स्ट सेकेंड एंड थर्ड second third and fourth so we have to choose the set of reaction which will not occur so the option here will be first second and third first second and third reactions are not possible here now let us move to the next question in the sequence we have match the chemical equations given in the list 1 with the type of chemical equation provided in the list 2 so what we have to do here we have to do the matching in the list 1 and list 2 so let's check the list 1 and list 2 here first list 1 in list 1 you have given the chemical reactions and in second list we have given the type of the chemical reaction now formation of nh3 from n2 and h2 now you know that if you are forming combining nitrogen and hydrogen and ammonia is forming it is basically our combination reaction because two elements are combining to give a particular type of product here so i can say that formation of nh3 will be our combination reaction so which option is correct here for the first we have the third option correct here now calcination of zinc with carbon you are performing the calcination of zinc with carbon so this kind of reaction will be our displacement reaction no calcination of zinc in presence of the carbon it will going to give you the decomposition reaction we have so this will be our decomposition so we can write that b2 third reaction reaction of aqueous bacl2 with h2so4 now what will happen in this reaction there will be the double displacement of the ions we have barium will react with sulfate ion and h2 is going to react with cl2 so what we will get we will get barium sulfate and 2 hcl so you can see that there is a displacement of two ions and where there is a displacement of the two ions in the solution we can call it as a double displacement so for the c we have the option number second so for uh, b we have the first option here 
so we can write here B1 and C2. Now, last reaction which we have provided is rancidity. Now, rancidity is basically the oxidation of the oils and these in this the oxidation and reduction basically take place simultaneously. So, we can say that when oxidation and reduction take place simultaneously in a reaction, such kind of reactions are known as redox reactions. So, rancidity will be our redox reaction. So, I, I can write here D4. Now, let us check the options here for these kind of the chemical reactions. We are given A, B, C, D. This is not our first. So, we have A3, B1, C2 and D4. Which option is satisfying here? A1, B5, C3, D4. This is not a correct option. A3, B4. This is again not a correct option. So, these two options can be discarded. A4 and B3. Again, this is not a correct option. A3, B1, C2 and D4. So, which conditions are satisfied here? Option number 4 is satisfying our answers. So, we can say that option number 4 will be the correct list of the chemical reactions we have provided. You can check the chemical reaction once again there. So, you can see the reactions here. So, uh, let us uh, uh, begin with our new question ne uh, next new question. The reaction between carbon and oxygen can be represented as. So, again we are given a question which belongs to the type of the chemical reactions we have you have. So, what you have to learn in your first chapter that is the chemical reactions and equations you have to learn all the type of reactions that we are provided whether it is decomposition, displacement, double displacement and you have to learn the balancing of the chemical equations because from your 10th class point of view and in your 10th class the balancing of the equation is a very very important concept. So now let us move or uh, let us start this question that C plus O2 is giving us CO2 plus heat. Now which of the following statement will classify this reaction? This reaction is known as combustion reaction. Why it is known as combustion reaction? Because carbon is burned in the presence of oxygen. So, I can write here this reaction is our combustion reaction. Now, Displacement reaction, there is no displacement of any ions. So, I can say that this is not displacement reaction. Endothermic, actually heat is evolved in this process. So, this is our exothermic reaction. It is not endothermic reaction. So, again this reaction, this equation is wrong. Next is combination reaction. Yes, it is a combination reaction. Why C plus O2 gives CO2 is a combination reaction? Because carbon is combining with oxygen. Two reactants are combining with each other to give us a single product. So, I can write here this reaction is also a combination reaction. So, here two options are correct here that is 1 and 4. It is a combustion reaction and it is a combination reaction. So, let us check the options here 1 and 3 it is not possible 1 3 and 4 again not possible 1 and 4 this is right answer and 1 only. Now, uh, you have given options uh, to confuse you. So, uh, you cannot go directly with the question that it is a combination reaction or it is a combustion reaction and tick that answer because the wrong answers are also provided with the correct answer to confuse the students. So, option number 1 and 4 is correct here. 1 only is not correct because it is also a combination reaction we have given here. So, this is the solution here. You can copy it from here. Now, moving to the next question in this sequence we have, the law of conservation of the mass is valid for which of the following reactions? Now, reactions involving oxidation, nuclear reaction, 
endothermic reactions. Now you have to uh, learn that point that the laws of conservation of mass and any of the laws which we have discussed are only applicable in case of the chemical equations and reactions. These are not applicable for the nuclear reactions. If we are talking about nuclear reactions, these laws will not be applicable there. So for the nuclear reactions, we do not have any laws. So oxidation is a kind of the chemical reaction and endothermic reactions are also a kind of the chemical reactions. So I can say that option number A and C is valid for the law of conservation of the mass. So which option is correct here? Here we have the first option correct that is A and C. So we can say that option number one is correct here. Now, let's move to the next question in this sequence we have. Which of the following reaction is a feasible reaction? Barium plus potassium sulfate gives us barium sulfate plus potassium. Zinc plus AgNO3 gives us zinc nitrate plus Ag. Mg plus Na2SO4 gives us MgSO4. Copper plus magnesium sulfate will give you copper sulfate. Now again, the reaction which is feasible only when a one metal that is reacting lies above the other, another metal in the reactivity series. So again, this is the concept that is belonging to your reactivity series. And you have seen that how much questions are asked in your exam from the reactivity series. So you have to learn reactivity series very clearly. Now, Barium and potassium reaction is not possible because they will not going to displace each other. So this is not a feasible reaction we have. Zinc plus AgNO3. This reaction is possible. Why it is so? Because zinc is lying in the upper part of the reactivity series above silver. So this metal is lying in the reactivity series above silver. Zinc is lying above Ag in reactivity series. So it will give us ZnNO3 whole twice and Ag. So this is our correct ans answer that it is a feasible reaction. Mg plus Na2SO4 will give you MgSO4 plus Na. Again, this reaction will not be possible because magnesium is not able to displace sulfate uh, to displace sodium from the sulfate solution. So this is not a feasible reaction. Copper plus magnesium sulfate give us copper sulfate. Copper is not going to react with the magnesium sulfate because it lies in a bottom part of the reactivity series. So this is again not a feasible reaction. So I can say that zinc is only reacting with silver nitrate to give you a zinc nitrate and a silver here. So here option number two will be the correct answer we have. Now let's move to the next question in the sequence we have. So what next question is saying? Oxygen gas react with hydrogen to produce water. Now, O2 van react with H2. O2 gas van reacting with H2. It is giving us water. Now, above in our example, what is the reaction signifies? oxidation of hydrogen, reduction of oxygen, reduction of hydrogen or redox reaction. So firstly, we have to calculate the oxidation state of these uh, elements we have used. So we can identify whether it may be oxidation, reduction or whether it may be both. So firstly, calculate the oxidation states here. Now, you can see that 
oxidation state of O2 is 0. But if I am calculating the oxidation state of oxygen in water, I have to substitute x here and 1 here. And it can be calculated as x plus 2 into 1, it will be equal to minus 2. So, what we can analyze from here, oxidation state of oxygen is changing from 0 to minus 2. Now, calculate the oxidation state of hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is in the gaseous form. Again, its oxidation state is 2, 0. So, oxidation state is 0. And finally, in case of the water, if I am going to find the oxidation state here, it came out to be 2 into x minus 2 equal to 0, 2x equal to 2, x equal to 2 by 2, that is equal to 1. So, it is changing from 0 to 1. Now, you can see that oxidation state of oxygen is changing from 0 to minus 2. Oxygen ki oxidation state change ho rahi hai 0 se minus 2. Lekin agar hum hydrogen ki baat kare, to hydrogen ki oxidation state ho gai 0 se plus 1. It means agar oxidation state mein increment hua hai, to wo oxidation kalaiga. Agar oxidation state mein reduction hua hai, to wo reduction kalaiga. To ame dek sakte hai ki is particular reaction mein oxidation and reductions dono occur kar rahe. It means the reactions in which oxidation and reduction take place simultaneously, we can term them as a redox reaction. So, we can say that yaha par hua oxidation or yaha par hua hamara reduction or oxidation plus reduction is known as redox reaction. Oxidation and reduction are termed as redox reactions. So, option number D will be the correct. You, can, you cannot say that oxidation of hydrogen is taking place or reduction of oxygen take place. These two phenomena are occurring together in a single equation. So, this is our redox reaction. So, you can copy this solution from here. So, we can proceed to our next part. Now, let us move to the next question in the sequence we have. Here we have the options here that is A, B and C, B, C and D. So, you can see that A, B and D are the correct, uh, A, B and D are the correct option because the oxidation of hydrogen is taking place here and the reduction of oxygen is taking place here. So, we can choose that option number 4 is correct because 3 phenomena are occurring here. There is oxidation of H2, there will be a reduction of O2 and both are taking simultaneously. So, we will say that it is a redox reaction. So, Option number A, option number B and option number D are correct here. Now, let us move to the last question in this chapter we have. We have to match the items of column 1 with the items of column 2. So, let us check the reactions here. NH4OH reacting with acetic acid is giving CH3COONH4 plus H2O. Now, you can see here that acid is reacting with base to give you a particular type of salt and water. Acid is reacting with base to give you salt and water. 
and when acid react with base to give salt and water such type of reactions are termed as neutralization reaction so i can say that for a part i have a correct option that is option number 4 now let us move to the next equation we have agbr will give you silver plus bromine so silver plus bromine reaction usually occurs in the uh, presence of the light so i can say that it is a photochemical reaction so the second reaction we have is 2 agbr and what you have to provide here you have to provide here light so it will give you ag plus br2 so this is our photochemical reaction so for the b part we have a third option now zinc carbonate is breaking into zno plus co2 it means there is a decomposition of a compound in the presence of heat so it is our thermal decomposition zinc carbonate when heated in when heated it is give you zno plus co2 so this is a decomposition and the decomposition is done in the presence of heat so we can say that it is a thermal decomposition now last reaction 2 al plus fe2 fe2o3 gives you fe plus aluminum oxide so you have to learn this is a equation known as the thermite process we have so this is our thermite process so i can say that for the c option i have the first answer and for the d option i have the second answer so this will be our sequence a4 b2 b3 c1 and d2 this will be the sequence of answers we have so let's check the options here we have a4 b3 c1 and d2 so which option is correctly fitted here a4 so we can say that option number 4 is correct a4 b3 c1 and d2 so this will be the sequence for the matching of the columns in our this question so you can see that acid and base reaction is known as neutralization silver bromide will give you silver plus bromine in the presence of light so it is a photochemical reaction zinc carbonate ka decomposition heat ki presence mein hota hai isliye humne us equation ko naam diya thermal decomposition it means decomposition in the presence of heat and the last reaction our is thermite process so these are the questions from your chapter that is chemical reaction and equation and these are the questions from your ntsc stage 2 so these questions are over for today we will deal with many more questions in our next lecture thank you so much and have a nice day